All right, guys, this is Benjamin. I go by X Benjamin X, and today I'll be talking about MLB DFS. Um, so if you know, I'm from New York, and FanDuel, DraftKings, and Yahoo all pulled out of New York today. It's not looking good for all the other sites. I think they all may pull out, but for now, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. We're going to keep looking into MLB, Yankees all day. We're going to keep um, finishing out the NBA season. We're going to keep putting out articles and videos, so don't worry about it. I still think I'll be able to um, play on some of the other smaller sites for now, but for whatever we do, let's just keep it moving. All right, so let's jump right into it, and I want to show you guys. First of all, we'll start with um, an Excel sheet that I am working on so you can see just what it, what it looks like after doing um, not too much um, not too much editing, but enough to make it look pretty. So I'm going to show you um, this screen, and then we're just going to go through and talk about maybe some of the um, MLB rule changes, how it works, and if you don't know anything about baseball at all, um, this probably isn't even a good video because this is just assuming you know what certain things are in the game but if you don't you know feel free to ask questions there's a chat in the YouTube so I have no problem answering anything for you but let's start off just looking at a batter spreadsheet that I made so I'm gonna share the screen for you guys and then we're just gonna just go through some of the stats and just a quick run through of um, the scoring and how we actually do uh, baseball when we're looking at things so all right, here we go. This is this is an Excel spreadsheet that I put together, and what it is, it just categorizes the MLB batters in the last 14 days. Shows you all the plate appearances they've had and, and how many games it's been. Um, then we have hits, doubles, triples, home runs, runs, walks, RBIs, stolen bases, walk percentage, strikeout percentage, ISO, which is a power statistic, BABIP, which is the luck statistic, average, which is batting average, on base percentage, slugging, WOBA, which is weighted on base average, WRC, I think that has to do with um, win percentage, like how, how much they contributed to wins. And then we have some a little bit more advanced statistics down here, which we'll get into. So what, what it used to be is for every time a batter would get a hit, it would be one point. You know, if you got a single, it was a point. Nice and easy on FanDuel. A double was two points. Triple was three. And a home run was six. And the way the home run worked was you would get um, a hit for each base. So you would get the four points from first, second, third, and home. You would also get the run and the RBI. Um, so then you get a run, which is one point, uh, a walk, which is one point, an RBI, which is one point per stolen base which is two so what happened with the scoring changes now is a hit is now three um a double is now six a triple is now nine and i believe a home run is 12. Um, let's let's actually check that out so we have mlb opening up here let's see what the scoring is now three six nine home runs are 12. We have run batted in at three, stolen base is at six. So everything is timed by three. But one of the main differences this season is that we don't have negatives anymore. So it used to be if someone would get out, you know, they would strike out, pop out, whatever it is, you would get a negative. So someone who would go 0 for 5 in a game would be minus 1.25. Now that same batter is going to get zero, which is the same as if someone got scratched. So this is the scoring is going to be a little bit different this season. It's going to be um, a lot more like DraftKings. So it looks like um, they want to make it higher scoring for the entertainment value and everything. Um, but whatever the case, I can't even play FanDuel at the moment. I'm I'm trying to find ways to work around it and you know maybe just go on other sites, but figure something out. But for now, we'll be doing everything on FanDuel and um, maybe a little bit more DraftKings for you guys because there's a lot of people who do. DraftKings MLB but um all right so some of the basics that we'll go through is just processes and things that I personally like to look up when it comes to batting and pitching and to help you guys out I'm just gonna 
give you a, a brief little story of how I got started in MLB. So MLB was my, my first DFS game. That's the first thing I played in 2014. Um, one of my friends was really into it. He got me into it, and I didn't know anything about baseball at all, but I worked at a bar, and there was always baseball games on. So I ended up just really playing a lot of um, a lot of teams that you know I know would be on for the day that I'd be able to watch. So I would stack them, and I started noticing different correlations of, wow, all right, so um, if I see this righty pitcher coming up and I take a bunch of lefties who are all good against righties, you know, I'm going to start getting some kind of correlation and maybe I could predict, all right, this guy's good and, and stuff like that. And maybe he's been playing better, but um, just going into it, just to tell you, I know nothing about MLB. I didn't play baseball um, after the age of like 12. Um, I was always football, basketball and track. So I didn't, really didn't have much experience in MLB at all. Never really went to games much. I didn't watch it at all. So if it helps you guys, just know you could do really well in, in MLB without knowing it. Um, but I don't recommend trying to stay ignorant about it. So within the first two weeks of me playing, I won um, $7,000 in GPPs um, in MLB. I paid off all my student loans, all my credit card debt. And then I basically just restarted back on FanDuel. And, um, and then just whatever my bankroll built up to, I would just work with it there. And everything else was already taken out. And I didn't understand really, you know, bankroll management and that stuff. I just saw money and took it out. I didn't actually do what a lot of my other friends did who won money and just put it all right back in. So um, I think that's something that really helped benefit me just life-wise and DFS-wise. And that was all just looking at stats because I didn't know the games at all. So I just figured, all right, let me just go out and look up some stats, see what's relevant and important. And that's how I really started with DFS in general. So I'm going to show you as a novice, as an amateur, what you can do to just look at some simple stats and how they correlate with each other. And um, I basically spend all of my time on one single site. There are definitely a couple of other sites that you can use. You know, I started on Roto Grinders, looking at their lineup pages and stuff like that, which is absolute gold. There's a lot of new websites coming out, but what I would really like to discuss is Fangraphs.com. That's what... You know, I learned on, they have the most extensive stats that I've personally found myself, that, and they're free. You can export them all to Excel, and, you know, I just started learning Excel recently, um, you know, a few months ago, but I've gotten pretty decent. So, um, me, me and CG from Daily Roto Sharks, you know, um, we teamed up, and now I'm co-owner of the site with him, and we work together, and we do a lot of things spreadsheet-wise, and, you know, that's my homie, so... Um, if you guys don't follow him, it's at Daily Roto Sharks. That's him. That's our site. That's us. So, you know, we are one and the same. Don't be afraid to hit him up because he's very knowledgeable about DFS as well. But uh, what we've been doing is putting together all these different cheat sheets and articles for you guys to um, really help you understand how to play and how the games themselves work. Because it's not just enough to know the sports, as everybody understands. There's a lot more that goes into um, with the salaries, with game theory, with different types of games and selecting and different bankroll management. So there's a lot that has to do with the nuances of DFS itself. So um, just keep that in mind. When I'm talking about you know individual matchups and stats, you can't just depend on that. You have to depend on your whole lineup and a team in general. And um, so what I'd like to start with is pitching because I believe pitching is very, very important. And if you understand pitching in baseball, you'll be able to understand hitting as well. Um, so I haven't actually set up my pitching Excel sheets. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to go through it, show you guys how I set it up, do um, quick editing and stuff like that. And then um, you guys can ask whatever questions you want in the chat. Feel free. If you're just listening, um, no problem. You can tweet at me. Uh, whatever you want to do, I'll make sure to respond to it. But right now I'm going to jump right into fan graphs and um, we'll really go through the different types of um, statistics that will help you out and how to set up your own custom reports on here, which is really going to get your own feel. So um, basically what I do is I kind of make my own trends on here. So if you guys followed me on, you know, uh, early, you know, a couple months back where I was really on Fantasy Labs and doing the trends, 
Um, I do the same kind of stuff with baseball. It's just a little bit more manual, less automatic. So um, I'm working with some people like um, Beast DFS and uh, DFS Gold and CG and um, a couple of other my guys, and we're really going to try to put together some spreadsheets. Um, Undone RSG, Chris Hollander, he's, he's new to the team. He's really good with that stuff. We got DFS Analytics, who's working with us. So we got a lot of people who are really um, – really good with Excel, really knows projections and stuff. And we're all just kind of figuring this all out ourselves. Cause like I said, none of us are pros, but um, we do have some experience and we know what we're talking about for the most part, but um, onto, onto some stats. So let's jump right into um, fan graphs. And this isn't going to be showing fan dual stats. This is just showing straight up pitcher stats. So we're just going to start from a plain sheet. So what you do is you set up your Fangraphs account, and this page is the leaders page. So we go right to it. You click leaders, and now this is going to come up on um, batters. It's a default table, and what you have to do is kind of just figure out what type of stats you like and what you want to put in. So I did that last season, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I did that. So first of all, we'll go to pitching. And just keep in mind, this website is as good as it gets for baseball. Um, it's not so much. Yeah, exactly. Um, guys, if you're in the chat, you could keep chatting. Um, CG is in there. He'll be talking to you guys um, while I'm talking. So if you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. We are very open to everything. Um, just so you know, we'll be re-uploading this later with editing and stuff like that. So it's going to be taken down for a little bit and then re-uploaded. So the way that this works, you have a table here. You have all different kinds of splits. But what we're focused on is just setting up this table. And then we'll be able to look at all the different kinds of, of splits and, and things like that. Lefty versus righty, time frames. Um, home away, men on base and stuff. So there's a lot of things that go on and into this. But I want to just show you some very simple ways to start your own, and then I'll show you what I have. So these are a bunch of custom reports I have, and I'll be making a lot more, and then I turn those into the Excel sheets. So if we look here, we have name, team, win, loss, save, game, game, save, innings pitched. Now if you look over here, we have win, loss, save, game, game, save, inning pitch, and then a line break, which is this black break over here. All right, let's see if I can zoom in for you guys. Okay, so the name and team are always going to be there. And then starting from here, this is where your custom uh, data will begin. One thing that I noticed, which I would love for them to fix, is they don't actually have um, positions on here, like FanDuel positions or, or just regular positions. Uh, when you go into batting and stuff. So I had to actually um, write those in myself over here. So I did that for the season. And then I would have to put it also for 14 days. But So let's go in here. And we have it set at the full season. So what we're going to be looking at is stats for all, all season and 15. Right here, this is the entire table. And if I'm looking, it's like, all right, I don't really know what WAR is. Let's get that out of here. You would click on that, and then this is the basically the pool of statistics that you can use. All right, so whatever you want to add to it, you will do from here. And then what it is is if you're removing something, you're basically just throwing it back into the pool. So what we see here is we would click WAR, and we would hit this line to the left, move that over. Oh, wait. Um, how do I get this? Oh, there it is. Delete. Sorry. So we would just delete that. That's the, to move it up and down, I guess. All right. So we have a line break. You could move that wherever you want. Right. So what we have here is an entire pool of. A bunch of that I like to look at, um, I'll show you. So hard percentage, I really like. So double click on that. We'll get that in there. Um, HLD, I don't know what that is. Get that out of there. So we have, oh, that's probably um, holding on base. But 
All right, so we have hard percentage. I like to look at that to see um, how hard a pitcher is giving up, and we'll go into these stats. A couple of things here. Um, double click that. Double click that, and then so we have the line break, and then what we'll do is create custom table. All right, so this is just very basic. Now we have all three of the things we were just looking at right here in the table, along with all the other things that they have here. So then once you have this, you're like, all right, I know I like this section, this section, this section. This all looks good for me. Now we'll go and export data. So right here. And then what that does is that just puts it in an Excel file for you. And now if you watch my first Excel video, you would already know how to really just go around and, and format this and make it look nice and pretty. And that's what we'll do. But I'm going to do it with my own. So let's get out of there. Go to my own report. Let's check out the the pitching for I didn't have it for the whole season I had it for the last 30 days for me um, recency was a little bit more uh, better for pitchers um, yeah there you go CG so right here we have my pitching table we're gonna export it and then we're gonna um, format it here so this is kinda like a quick Excel lesson if you haven't caught it yet um, but if you have then what we're going to do is show you guys exactly how to, um, I mean, if you haven't, we're going to show you how to go through it because I have to do it myself. So right here, we have all the different stats that I like. And if we look, you know, you have innings pitch, strikeouts, ERA, strikeouts per inning, uh, I mean, per nine innings. So it, that's extrapolated as if a pitcher were to pitch a full nine inning game. These are how many strikeouts you would have. Same things with walk per nine innings, home run per nine innings. This is a luck statistic, bat, batting on uh, batting average on balls in play. So what this statistic means is it's their batting average for every time someone hits the ball and it's in play, in field. It's not out of bounds, all right? So what that does is if you have a very high batting average on balls in play, odds are you've gotten very lucky because defenses have been missing those balls. And if you've been getting hits on it, you know, odds are it's not that you just know where to put the ball every single time unless you're like Tony Gwynn, but um, you've been getting lucky. So if you have a very low BABIP, that means um, you've been getting very unlucky, which, and you know, um, that means so if you have been hitting the ball very hard and good and you're just hitting right at people, you'll have a low batting average but um, they'll consider that unlucky. So it's a good statistic to look at in terms of regression. Um, so we're gonna, I'm going to go through all of them right now, but what we'll do is just um, format this a little bit. So I'm going to breeze through this um, Excel, try to pay attention, but if you can't, you can just rewind this and go right back into it. So oh, I don't think I was showing you guys. Man, that happens all the time. All right, um, right here. Okay, so let's just look at right here. This is Excel. What I would do is hold Shift and Control and click to the right. And what that does is selects the entire row. Go to Sort and Filter, click Filter. All right. Then I would do the same thing and format it just so it looks a little bit different. And you guys can format whatever way you want. I'll do the same here, hold, hold shift, press right, and then hold control and shift and press down. It'll take me all the way to the bottom. Do the same thing with the coloring here. And then what you want to do when it comes to making these look pretty is you go into conditional formatting. So you would select an entire row and go to you know color scales, and this shows you um, green is the highest, so the higher it goes, the green, more green it is. The, this one is the higher it goes, the more red it is. So it's different kinds of statistics, but we know the more strikeouts, the better. So we would click the green. Um, but ERA, we want it as low as possible, so we would do the other one and click red right here. So if we wanted to sort this, we could check out the ERAs, 0.39. That's ridiculous. And so this is over the last 30 days of the season. So let's go pitchers last 
early days. And um, that's pretty remarkable, 0.39. And then we would look at a bunch of other stats. So what I would do is just go through K per nine, I want that high. Walks per nine, I want that low. Home runs per nine, I want that low. BABIP, the lower the, I guess better you would say, because that means um, the regression, um, the lower it is would show you, you know, Actually, no, I wouldn't do that. Let's let's talk about that later in just a theory, theory sense. Um, home runs would be you don't want it to be high. Hits per nine, you don't want it to be high. Um, strikeouts per walks, you would like to be high. Left on base percentage, you would like to be high. Ground ball percentage, you would like to be um, low. Um, Actually, I, I guess for a pitcher, you want it to be on, a, on the ground just because, you know, double plays and stuff like that. But a lot of times um, when balls are hit hard on the ground, it, it makes it harder for the defense to actually um, make a play. So right now I'll leave that. Home runs for fly balls, you want that to be low. You want to give up a low amount of home runs for fly balls. Um, I got to look more into these two stats, but I know they're like um, – a, re a regression type statistics similar to ERAs, but probably more specific. Um, I have to get more into that. So that's one that I'm not fully uh, prepared to explain to you guys. But all right, then we have la line drive, ground ball, and fly ball. So we can get rid of the ground ball here. So out of 100% of hits that this, per this pitcher is giving up, the, um, the player, uh, they've given up 16% of those hits as line drives, 67% as ground balls, and 17% as fly balls. So, all right, so we definitely want the ground balls to be high, so the correlation's there. Line drives, um, I guess we, we want high fly balls. I'm not really sure exactly how that would line up in terms of the line drives. We got it. Um, all right, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Just going through the Excel of how to um, set up a quick MLB spreadsheet. So you're looking at the average about it. So this is swing percentage, a statistic that shows you the um, how often they get a player to swing for every pitch thrown. Swinging strike percentage is how often they throw a strike and the player actually misses the ball. O swing is um, the outside swing, outside the zone swing percentage. So what that means is they get people to swing outside of the zone when they throw it. So out of 100% of the time thrown outside of the zone, Arietta gets people to swing 37% of the time. It's going to be a lot easier to explain that on the batter side. So let's just go there. That is a lot easier to explain just in terms of it's easier for you to understand and comprehend. Um, but when it comes to splits, you really want to know your pitching stuff. So we'll, we're going to do a lot more advanced videos and tutorials and articles based on MLB so you guys can really understand all the advanced stuff. But I'm just giving a quick rundown and showing some of the, the processes I use when looking and comparing um, different players and how to figure out what type of players are good for cash and what type of players are good for GPPs and um, the difference when it comes to baseball because um, it's not as straightforward it's not as straightforward in baseball as it is in MLB. So one thing I'd like to explain real quick is splits. So let's just go back into fan graphs and look at batter splits. So someone um, we could show Let's see, someone who's very um, one-sided is David Ortiz. He has a ton of experience and sample size to look at. So if we wanted to go into splits, um, now that you know, you know how to set up those charts and, and stuff real quick, just export it. Now we can go into some of the more advanced stats over here. So these are things I like to look at, right? Um, when he hits as a lefty, um, Versus a righty as a lefty. Yeah, these two right here are showing versus lefties as a lefty versus righties as a lefty. So switch hit when you get switch hitters, this is very important to look at. See, you know, um, 
if they bat better as a righty versus a lefty, a righty versus a righty, lefty versus lefty, lefty versus righty, all that kind of stuff. So you can just look at it knowing that he rarely ever hits as a righty. These are the two splits right here you want to be looking at. And th these aren't the advanced splits, but these are, you know, hits, singles, doubles. So these are some things you could look at. But he's obviously much better versus righty. So when you're thinking about baseball, if you don't know the sport at all, um, righties hit lefties very well. Lefties hit righties very well. It's just a thing with baseball. Um, it's a lot easier for righties to hit lefties, I think, than for um, lefties to hit righties. Um, just because you just see so many more lefties. But when a lefty is truly dominant, it's hard for anyone to hit them. Um, but for David Ortiz, he's a guy who just mashes right-handed hitting. He always pulls the ball pretty much. But if you wanted to check what type of player someone is, let's um let's go into someone that I really fell in love with last year, Billy Burns. Um, he plays exactly the way that I would play, and um, I just I just love watching him. So if we go into his splits right here, we could just look. He's a switch hitter. But he bats versus lefty as a righty. He bats um, a lot better versus righties for whatever reason. Um, th and this is over the course of last season. But what you can look at with different things like this is you could look where he hits the ball, um, if he hits more grounders, fly fly balls, whatever. Um, the situation. So you can kind of pair a lot of things together. But um, the thing I really like to look at is batting order. Um, he, he seems to have always let off. So if we want to go and look at someone who may switch around a bit, let's look at um, Chris Calabello. He's someone that I use a lot last year in GPPs. Um, he was always low owned, but he was someone who was pretty reliable for the most part. But they moved him around a lot. So let's just check out and see what position in the lineup he batted best. So out of so he, he has a lot of a decent amount of sample size from last year at, at different spots, but you could see they like to move him around, but never anywhere higher than fourth. But when he's in the the sixth and seventh spot, he does very well. So now we would want to check that, you know, um, against the righties and lefties and how he does. And it seems um he's actually a better hitter against righties than he is against lefties, and he's a righty. So that's very interesting to notice because usually righties are better against lefties and lefties are better against righties. So this is someone that, you know, when a righty would come up, I would still use him uh, because a lot of people would actually be off of him thinking, oh, well, he doesn't have the righty-lefty matchup. And a lot of people will tell you that's some of the most important things to look at is, you know, if there's a lefty play, a righty with, with power or contact or whatever it is, but you don't always want to do that, right? But if we look here, let's look at his his home and away splits. When he was home versus a lefty, he hit 224. That's not very good. And in his park, um, that that's not really really that good to um, <laughs> at all. So if, if you're thinking about, oh well, you know he he's a righty. He's been hitting very well. There's a lefty coming up, and he's at home. That's probably not the ideal spot. But when he's going away in the same sample size of games, he's hit over 400. So for whatever reason, he plays a lot better away against lefties. But when he's home, he hits a lot better as a righty. So um, those are two things that you could really, um, really look at. And, you know, it's not a huge sample size, but it's a season sample size. You could just see different things that I would be comparing against each other. So for Chris Calabello, when I see, you know, maybe he's on a hot streak or his price is good, he's in a good spot in the lineup, I'm going to want to play him more uh, against a lefty away than I would at home. But against righties, I'd rather play him at home. So um, this is fan graphs, and it's just amazing the things you could do. Um, shows you a d at different positions. So some people actually bat better or worse when they're playing at different positions in the field for whatever reason. Um, but then you can go into the advanced, and a lot of it's the same. You know, you have different months. Some players bat better different times of the month. Um, and, you know, those things are better to look at as a career sample size. 
And in baseball, a lot of things just always regress back to the mean, meaning if someone's hit a certain way their whole career and they're hitting much better or much worse at this time in a season, they're probably going to regress back to what their career averages were. And that, that's just the way that I choose to look at the sport because I could really evaluate players by looking at my charts. So looking at some of those, you know, advanced stats and, and you know, trying to explain and just understand what some of them are, now we could look at – actually, this is the wrong way. Let's look at the batting. So th this is very important just to understand when it comes to – you know, choosing between different batters. So if we were looking here, let's look at the contact, right? Contact and hard percentage. So what I like to do is I'll sort by contact. So this is over the last 14 days of the season. These players have been um, hitting with the most contact. They hit, um, Martin Prado was hitting the ball 93% of the time that he swung and he was missing 2% of the time that there was a strike. So when that ball was coming down the plate, he was hitting it, right? So we have what I'd like to start with, first of all, is the line drive ground ball fly ball. These are very important when it comes to hitting. Um, you know, I've been around this sport playing DFS two years. I really started diving into advanced stats last year, so I'm still looking at this stuff from all angles. And if anyone has any comments or insight on this, feel free to offer it to me, and, and I'll uh, – I'll take it in like a sponge. But here we have um, line drive, ground ball, fly ball. So out of all of his hits, 17% were line drives, 45% were fly uh, ground balls, 36% were fly balls. So when we're looking at someone, um, maybe who we want to see, you know, who's going to hit home runs for us, we would go to home run to fly ball, and then look who has the most fly balls, right? So... Nelson Cruz was hitting a home run 41% of the time he hit a fly ball and was hitting a fly ball 24% of the time that he got a hit. So that's a, a really good correlation there that you'd like to look at. But for someone, um, let's do the opposite. All right, so let's go someone who hits a, a ton of fly balls. Steve Pierce, uh, no, this is a better one, Seeger. He hit 54% fly balls, which is awful. So half of the balls he was hitting was a fly ball, right? But eight per only 8% 8 of those went for home runs. So that means he was getting out a lot, just straight, like popping up. And so you could just look at these two numbers right here and see like, all right, this guy is – he's probably not seeing the ball well. Um, he has a decent contact rate, but he's just hitting it straight up in the air for the most part which is not good. But what we look at here is um, what we have. All right, I'll show you these first. So out, this is outside the zone swing percentage, meaning when a pitcher pitches the ball and it's outside of the zone, Marlon Bird swung 48% of the time over the last 14 days. Let, let's uh, extrapolate a little bit more in, into the season stats. Maybe it'll give you guys a little bit better um, perspective. So let's go into um, the swing percentage. So. Pablo's up there, Bird's still up there for the whole season, but Pablo over the course of the season has that number. Now this is, Z is inside the zone swinging. So when the ball is pitched inside the strike zone, he was swinging 75% of the time. Now, I still have to figure out, you know, if it's really good that someone swings a lot or if it's not because, you know, there are a lot of people who are very patient and don't swing as much and have high walk percentages, but there are people who do swing a lot who still walk. Um, a decent amount. So I really have to find um, which correlations are best there, and that's stuff that we'll be analyzing over this next season. But um, So then we have total swing percentage, people who swing the absolute most, um, Marlon Bird, Adam Jones, Garcia. These guys just swing at everything. But if you're swinging at everything and having really good contact rates and um, hitting a lot of ground balls and, and line drives, like, you know, Starling Marte, his stats are looking pretty good. So you can find different correlations and just see who's hot looking at, you know, season and 14 days and stuff. So then we look at outside the zone contact, right? So these are always going to be just very high contact players in general because most players can't hit the ball when it's outside the zone because it's not supposed to be there. 
they're not expecting it there. But players like, you know, Brantley, I love playing him. He's one of my favorite players in DFS all time and probably has single-handedly won me more money than any other player besides maybe a couple pitchers. But he's someone who um, – he doesn't hit a ton of home runs, but he hits for very high contact. He hits the ball relatively hard. He never misses, right? So this is swinging strike percentage. When there's a strike, he's not missing. He's not swinging and missing. It's just it's just a strike. Um, you know, maybe a foul, foul ball or something. Uh, he fouls it off a lot, which is the contact. But then what we can look into when, when we're looking at a player like Brantley, so we see, you know, he hits the ball when it's outside the zone a lot. He hits the ball when it's inside the zone a lot. Now we want to see what happens when he's, he's getting that good contact and hitting the ball a lot. So um, it looks like I need to K percentage strike. You want um, the lowest possible, so the higher the worst. Okay, so right here. So we have – let's look at walk percentage and strikeout percentage, right, for Brantley. So he walks – He walks 10% of the time and strikeouts only 8% of the time. Now, when you want to look at the, you know, the average and stuff like that, you can see that he is definitely at the, um, the better end of not striking out, right? 8%. Anything, anything under like 15, it looks like, is good. Um, anything under 10 is elite. So th this is a group of elite players in terms of not striking out. And then you want to look, all right, well, what kind of upside do these players have? And this is over the course of a season. So when you're looking in terms of upside, you know, you want to know what it is for their career, their season, the last couple of days and stuff. But out of this group of players who hit the ball very well, Altuve has the most stolen base upside by far, followed by Brantley a little bit. But then we got to look here. Altuve scored a ton of runs. He gets in base. He gets uh, himself in scoring position a lot. Um, he doesn't walk that much. But I, I came up. This is just a, a stat, just based on the total of hits, stolen bases, and walks. So that's something I really want to know. A player over the course of last season who got the most hits, stolen base, and walks is going to be very useful to us because. That shows very, very good upside, and that's total hits. So over the course of last year, these will be probably the most elite players in terms of fantasy points. You know, so these are just a lot of different ways you could look at things, right? So a couple of things just to finish up. I love hard percentage when it comes to um, recent and season. So. I, I would rather look at recent and who's been doing it uh, lately. You know, um, a lot of a lot of baseball is hot streaks and cold streaks. So over the last two weeks of the season, last 14 days, these are the players, top 10 players who are hitting the ball the absolute hardest. So if you're hitting the ball very hard, you get you have a um, a high home run to fly ball percentage. You hit. A, a cup, a decent amount of fly balls. Um, you're, you know, you have a very high weighted on base average. This is everything's pointing to Goldschmidt. We all know he's a stud if you know anything about it. But um, so that that's just a basic rundown of how to set up some quick MLB sheets. What a lot of the advanced stats are. Um, how to use some of them. It's not exactly um a full rundown the way that we're gonna do in the future. But um, we're going to have premium and paid content where we really dig into all these numbers for you. We show you how they uh, represent with FanDuel and DraftKings and, and how to best use them. But um, let's just dig right into some um, lineup making real quick. I'm, I'm a restricted. Can I get into the free roll at all? If I can't even get into the free roll, then um, we're going to have to do this some other way another time. I'll have someone else share a screen for me. Um, they might not even have a free roll or anything. Can I create a free roll? Let's see. Can I create a free roll? Come on, free practice. I'll make this a league. And if anyone wants to join this with me, 
You're more than welcome. I'll make it 20. This is going to be a free one. Friends only. Billy Roto Sharks. Not fighter free roll. No be Yay. Can I do it? Can I do it? Come on. Restricted. Nope. All right, so we'll go over the FanDuel stuff another time. Um, hopefully that was just a, a brief enough explanation of MLB and just some of the stats and, and the way it works. And then we'll really get into um, the DFS aspect of it and really dig into um, the correlation between splits. We'll talk about um, different factors such as how weather affects baseball, how the different stadiums affect baseball, how um, wind will affect baseball. That's very big. And one other thing that is um, pretty unknown throughout the industry, and it will be a lot more widely known this season, is umpires. There's going to be a lot more data on umpires. Um, there are hitters umpires and there are pitchers umpires, meaning that some um, have wider strike zones, which help out the pitchers, and some have very small strike zones, which help out the batters. And so there's a lot of data on those things and heat maps of, of um, where umps like to call strikes and balls and different things like that. So we'll be getting into all those different kinds of advanced things throughout the different season. And um, I just really hope that you were able to understand what I was doing. I was trying to really breeze through it and go through it fast for you guys because um, this is going to be a, just a quick video so you can really – um, just look at it, glance through, um, check out fan graphs and some of the things that I was looking at. And what we're going to do in the future is make premium content, some, some advanced stuff for you, but it's not going to be expensive at all. What we'll do is we were going to have like $2 cheat sheets, things like that, $5 videos. So something we'll do is a video like this with um, someone else who's good at Excel or good at MLB DFS or other sports. What we're going to do is – really dig in, go through it, show you guys some really advanced things that you could use, some strategies and processes and stuff. And for $5, um, I, I think it's a steal for, you know, the hour or hour and a half that we'll, we're going to put into it with just great strategy and insight and all that other information that I think is going to be real useful for everybody. And then eventually, once we have enough content, we're going to be doing subscriptions and memberships where – you can just pay monthly or weekly and just get all of the paid information included where you don't have to buy it every time. But um, we want to have paper videos so people can choose which videos they'd like to pay for. But if they just want all the content, you can do memberships. Okay, so thanks a lot, guys. This was X Benjamin and X. I hope you got a lot out of this. Please come to DailyRotoSharks.com. Hit up CG at Daily Roto Sharks on Twitter and um, feel free to hit me up at X Man Jam and X as well. Alright, take care guys. <laughs>